Well, Colorado's back at it after a bye week. After the demolition of UCF. And uh, I, I kind of slowed down on the Colorado coverage. Um, mainly because I don't think it's really worth my time to make videos about North Dakota State. Uh, fake Mahomes at Nebraska. You know, so on and so forth. But now Colorado is getting into the swing of things. And uh, Big 12 play. And... Um, when they had the UCF game, it was absurd and ridiculous how the, the books makers, these, these these idiots who call themselves experts, never trust someone who calls themselves an expert. Always remember, XDN is an expert. Now, uh, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe to this channel. But the experts, they said uh, UCF is going to win by 15, and then they dropped the line to like 13 and a half, which is just ridiculous. I made easy big money on that game. And for this ball game, Kansas State comes to Boulder, Colorado, and um, they're going to face Colorado in another night game, and I'm so sick of these night games. Deion Sanders said last year he don't like night games. See, that's another thing about football. For an athlete, the psyche of an athlete, it's not normal to keep playing at 8 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. That's what, like, if you look at the NFL, there's a reason why a lot of the time the Sunday night game is so boring in the NFL. The Thursday night games. These night games are just terrible. It throws you off. It throws off your, 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 your schedule, your routine, all types of things. And um, anyone who played sports, whether you played in high school, college, pro, they will tell you this. To constantly play a night game. But they are scheduling this, meaning the NCAA and the TV networks, because Colorado does such huge programming. It's prime time. It'll do the biggest rating possible. Great, great. The, the leeches that they are, uh, nobody likes Colorado, but they keep putting them in prime time to get that quarter hour, you know, revenue share. But whatever, that's the business. I would be much more happy if they just played noon games, three o'clock games. No, no, another late night game. On the East Coast, 10-15, which means this game going to end at 2.30 in the morning. Great. Now, my betting research. Oh, Lord. My NFL betting research. I'm going to be up at 6 in the morning. Then I got to wake up. Oh, Lord. But um, Avery Johnson and uh, Giddens and uh, the traitor, Dylan Edwards, the traitor, returns to Colorado. And this should be a hell of a game. Very entertaining. Now, of course, I got to uh, mention the two moronic sides, meaning... People who obsessively hate Colorado for no actual reason. And then the other side, the delusional Colorado slurpers. Because the, the slurpers, they want you to constantly worship and praise, worship and praise, worship and praise Dion and Colorado. And then the other side of idiots, they want you to constantly criticize them and discount them. Both sides, idiots, please, you know, all of, all of these people on both sides, jump off a bridge. Now, the people left are the logical people. The people who don't get emotional. Shout out to the logical Colorado fans. Shout out to the logical people. Because even you know people who might criticize Colorado, there are people who are logical about it. You know, they criticize them. I don't know about the O-line again. I don't know about this. But the logical people, you know what the logical people are saying? They had a hell of a game versus um, Colorado State. And they played tremendously versus UCF. And uh, they're giving them credit. So shout out to the logical people who actually know the game of football, who don't get emotional. You know, I just seen a video of, I think it's one of the Colorado reporters. I think it's Brian Howell. He just did a video previewing this game, and he was like, I think Colorado will probably win by one point, maybe a game-winning field goal. And there's idiots in the comments, how could you, you, you hating on Colorado. How are you going to say they're going to win by one point? Because that's the slurpers. They want you to, Colorado's going to win by a blowout and destroy every team. Delusional. And them same people, they never watched a Colorado game in their life. They don't even know where Boulder is in the state of Colorado. They don't even know where Colorado is on a U.S. map, and it says Colorado on the map. These are bandwagon hoppers, emotional males with stains in their draws. Journalists are not fans. They're supposed to be objective because you cover Colorado as a journalist. That doesn't mean you cheer for them. It means you cover what they do. And if you give a prediction, it's based on your research 
and, and, and history and so on and so forth. But no, no, no. The slurpers, how, are you, how come you picked them to win by one? I'm sorry, you, you missed the part where he picked them to win. Yeah, but it's by one. It just never ends with these monkeys. It just never does. This is not a pro-Colorado channel. It's also not an anti-Colorado channel. This channel is, I say what needs to be said, do what needs to be done. Colorado's playing the best they've played since Deion Sanders got there. And one thing people don't realize is the people who want to overly criticize Deion Sanders in Colorado, they sound like fools for many reasons. And one of the biggest reasons is this is his second year coaching major college football. People never seem to remember that. Last year, they, they, they just want to kill him every week. Okay, it's his first year coaching at this level of college football. And he has to restructure Colorado. This is not Alabama he took over and he has 50 five-star recruits. No, this is Colorado. How good were they before Dion got there? And the room goes that quiet. This is his second year. They're 4-1. and one. The last three games they've been playing better than they've ever played since they got there. They're finally using a tight end, an extra tight end. They found a running game with at least three running backs. The running backs they have now, they're more capable than Dylan Edwards was because he's more of an outside, you know, in-space running back. The running backs they have now, they're power backs who can do the power O and counter and all these type of things. They can run off tackle. They can run in between the gaps. It's beautiful. The defense is playing tremendously. Now, I will say this. Because football is about consistency and momentum and chemistry. Shiloh Sanders is returning. To me, this might be a slight red flag. Because I think right now the defense has a chemistry with Stoutmeyer. Is it Stoutmeyer or Stoudemire? I remember his father played safety for the Giants. But um, him, Carter Stoutmeyer, and uh, Silman Craig, who's been playing tremendously. There's a chemistry they have. Shiloh, I, I made this complaint about him last season. Shiloh, a lot of the time, it seems like he's playing Madden. He's out of position at times. Shiloh is not good in man coverage. He's solid in zone coverage. He's solid in run coverage. But man coverage, if you, if he's the last line of defense and the ball's in the air, he's not good at playing the ball in the air. And I think a lot of times he tries to make the big hit instead of the smart tackle. So I don't know if he's going to start this game. He will be playing. If if I was Colorado, I would not start him. I put him in in certain plays, um, maybe second downs. I don't want him. I don't want him in on third downs, especially third and long. He tries to make the big hit too many times instead of the smart play. I don't know if people notice that. And if you look at scouting sites that talk about him, that's why his draft stock is not really ri rising or falling. Most of the draft people, they have Shiloh around, I think, the fifth round maybe. Fourth, the fourth round to the seventh round. I've seen some some sites say undrafted. Um, but yeah, to me, he's like a fourth, he's like a fourth, fifth, sixth round safety in the draft. Which is fine as long who you know as long as you get picked as long as you get picked in the draft, and you know if you go undrafted you can still you know get get on a team or whatever, whatever the case. But there's a reason why Silman Craig I think is a far better NFL prospect. He's far more intelligent. Um, I think he has better um, he has better vision on the field of uh, you know his, his pursuit is much smarter much better. Shiloh he, he leads with his broken forearm. He leads with his shoulder. It's like he wants to play. It's like he thinks he's Brian Dawkins or John Lynch. He, make the smart tackles, son. But anyway, in this game, I think Colorado will once again have a beautiful rushing day. I think their linebackers will play tremendously uh, tomorrow, and they'll need them. And I think Avery Johnson at times will get frustrated by Colorado, but he's a tremendous talent, and... They need to stay with what they've been doing, which is having linebackers play zone in the box. That stops the quarterback runs. And they're, I think they're going to be on Dylan Edwards because they know what he does and what he likes. You know, the wheel routes, however they try to use him. Now, Giddens is the best running back at Kansas State. And, of course, even some of the morons were like, 
oh, Dylan Edwards transferred to Kansas State and he's still a backup. Yeah, because the guy in front of him is actually an NFL type running back. He's a backup because the guy is better than him. It's always these delusional monkey groupies who never know what they're talking about. They're just saying things. Yes, he left he he left here and became a backup because the running back in front of him is a very good running back. Better than him. In, in sports, usually in sports, breaking news, usually you play the best player. <laughs> breaking news. Hit the like button. Share this video. Subscribe to this channel. Now, usually in a game like this, you would think, well, Dylan Edwards, you know, they, the, you know, Kansas State, they're probably going to him, the coaches, hey, what does Colorado like to do? What do they like to do? But Dylan Edwards can't give Kansas State coaches any information. Why? Colorado has a completely different defensive coordinator. They have a completely different offensive system. Last year when Shermer was there, he was just getting indoctrinated, but it wasn't his complete system. It's a complete different system now. So Dylan Edwards can't even really give them inside information like that. So that's, you know, a negative for Kansas State. Um... Avery Johnson, I, in my season preview, go watch that video of my college football season preview. I thought he would have, I thought he'd start out the season like every game 300 yards, just destruction. But he was, he started out very slow and then now he's picking it up. But I think this game will end in the fourth quarter with Kansas State having the ball, driving down the field, third and long, Colorado stops them. Then on a fourth and six, Colorado stops them. And I think Colorado will win this game 26 to 20. Um, I think uh, Kansas State will struggle with the amount of res the, the receiving group. The, the thing about Colorado is they got four NFL receivers, and I think that that rotation will hurt Kansas State as the game goes on. Um, but I have Colorado winning this game. They have Kansas State as a four point favorite. I really don't get why. Oh, well, Kansas State is ranked. What does a ranking mean? Alabama just got embarrassed by Vanderbilt. I, I don't put I don't put that much into a ranking. I, I really don't. Oregon is ranked number three. How they look terrible most of the season. How are they number three in the country? But anyway, short dick Dan Lanning. <laughs> that playing for clicks. That was one of the stupidest quotes I've ever heard. That's just moronic. And Ohio State's about to get at the Oregon tomorrow, but whatever the case. Um, I think Colorado should actually be a favorite uh, by two and a half points. But I'll take that plus money, and I'll win on them. I'll probably do my bet if I'll take Colorado to cover and take them on the money line. That's easy money. Uh, but that's my prediction. Dylan Edwards, the traitor, returns to Colorado. And um, he'll be embraced. He might. I think he might have a couple big plays. But I also think he'll have some plays where he gets stuffed and destroyed and the crowd will erupt. But that's football. But with that said, I'm up out of here and that is it.